Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. I'm Rex Finance, and today we're going to be talking about Workhorse and Lordstown Motors. Now, it has been a while since I talked about either of these two companies on my YouTube channel, so I'm really looking forward to discussing not only the current predicaments that each company finds themselves in currently, but also what I feel like the future holds for both of these companies. Now, there's been a lot of news that has come out surrounding both these companies over the past few weeks and over the past few months, and the most of that news has been generally negative for current shareholders of the stock. For those of you that are unfamiliar, I was actually one of the first, if not the first YouTuber to start talking about Workhorse. I made videos and was buying shares of Workhorse when it was less than $3 a share, actually. Now, I don't say that to brag. I say that because if we look at the stock chart, it's clear that I rode Workhorse stock from less than $3 a share up to over $40 a share at its all-time high. Now, hindsight is 2020. I wish I was able to sell at $40 a share because I would have made tremendous profits. But unfortunately, the US government proved that they're extremely inefficient and the decisions they make don't make any sense. And they didn't award Workhorse the multi-billion dollar USPS contract. Now, the reason I sold out of Workhorse is because I felt that that contract was imperative to the success of Workhorse going forward. So I sold all my shares of Workhorse at $20 a share. Obviously, I still did pretty well with that investment because I was buying shares at less than $3 a share. But the honest truth is, most people that bought into Workhorse ended up losing quite a bit of money. So ever since Workhorse lost this USPS contract, it's kind of been a crappy situation for shareholders where the share price went down to the seven, $8 range. But just recently, the share price has kind of seen an uptick. It's actually almost doubled from its lows. And the reason this is, is because Wall Street bets and meme culture, I like to say, has opened their eyes to this company. And honestly, if enough retail investors start buying into this stock, we could see workhorse shares explode to new all-time highs of $50 a share, $60 a share, et cetera. Because if we look at the current short interest on workhorse, it is actually the second most shorted stock in the entire stock market. And we all know that retail investors are looking for new opportunities to try and screw over hedge funds for lack of better words. So if you're a workhorse believer, I would not give up hope yet, but I also have to say the current valuation is valuing this company at just under $2 billion. When we look at the trailing 12 months revenue that this company has brought in, that is only one and a half million dollars of revenue. So clearly the valuation doesn't make sense. This is a very expensive company for what their current financial situation looks like. However, just like AMC, just like GameStop, I don't think this is a fundamentals play in the stock market. This is a lot of retail investors wanting to screw over these hedge funds. So later in this video, I'll get into why I think Workhorse could actually be Lordstown Motors savior. If you guys did not know, Workhorse owns 10% of Lordstown Motors, which is why generally when Lordstown Motors is having a rough day in the stock market, Workhorse is generally affected too. Anyways, let's start covering Lordstown Motors. There's been a lot of information that's come out surrounding this company. I actually bought shares of Lordstown Motors before the merger took place as soon as the SPAC merger was announced. I think my average cost was like $11.15. I ended up selling out of this company at around $20 a share. I think the all-time highs were over 30, so I missed out on some potential profit there. But the reason I sold out is because it sounded like they were gonna continue to push back their production timeline. That is something you never want to see happen as a shareholder in growth stocks in startups. You don't want to see them continuing to push production off. You want to see them actually hit their timelines, hit their goals, because then you know the management team is all in on this. They're doing their absolute best to make things work. With Lordstown Motors, the timeline and the goals the management team had set up for the company were very, very important because if Lordstown Motors hit their timeline and hit their goals, they would have released the first full-sized electric work truck to the markets ahead of the Cybertruck, ahead of any other full-sized electric work truck. But now we've seen Lordstown Motors kind of come back on their word where they're not gonna have full production in September this year. They're gonna start small production this year and actually start deliveries in 2022. So are they really beating these other companies to the markets? Not really. And that's really a downfall for this company. Their main advantage was that they were gonna be the first to the market. They were gonna have the first mover advantage, but now they're not gonna have that. Their price point was extremely affordable. But now we've seen Ford announce it's all electric F-150. And the price range on that is actually cheaper than the Lordstown Endurance. So all of a sudden we've kind of seen Lordstown's competitive advantages go away. Now, however, there is still one competitive advantage that Lordstown Motors has that no other company has. And if they market it well enough, they can still see extreme success. 
What they have that these other companies don't have is hub motors. Now, I'm not gonna take time in this video to explain hub motors, but if anybody wants to look up that technology, just Google hub motors, and in particular, Google eLave Propulsion Technologies, which is the partner that Lordstown Motors has. The most prominent news that has come out over the past few days is that Lordstown Motors is somewhat strapped for cash, and also that their CEO and CFO were kind of forced out of the company. Now, I think Steve Burns, who's now the former CEO, I think he's a very intelligent guy. He clearly knows what he's doing. He is the one that helped create the technology behind the Siri in your iPhone. However, I don't necessarily think Steve Burns is the greatest businessman. So I honestly think Steve Burns being replaced is probably good for this company. Steve Burns is actually the former CEO of Workhorse as well, if you guys did not know that. And Steve Burns kind of left Workhorse in a similar situation as to where Lordstown Motors is at currently. Strapped for cash, pushing back production timelines. On another note, Workhorse has kind of always been like this though. Even after Steve Burns left Workhorse, Workhorse has continued to push back its production timelines. What we clearly don't want to happen is Lordstown following the same fate that Workhorse has followed. We need both these companies to start producing and start delivering. They both have tremendous backlogs, but for whatever reason, they can't get these vehicles pushed out. Anyways, I've kind of gone on a tangent about both these companies, but the point I wanted to make is that, you know, I've done a lot of research on these two companies. They were both very instrumental in me starting this YouTube channel and actually gaining a following on this platform. So it really hurts me on the inside seeing both these companies struggling currently. Now, again, I think there's a future in store for both these companies if they start producing vehicles. So let's start diving into the future here. First with Lordstown Motors, I've said it repeatedly in this video, but they have to start producing vehicles and they have to start delivering vehicles. They cannot push any of this stuff back any further. If you guys did not know, in the past I actually deposited $100 to get my place in line to secure my own Lordstown Endurance. I did this last year over 12 months ago now. I am a clear believer in the technology of this pickup truck. I like the design of it. I think that electric vehicles are the future and there are so many other people out there just like me. And on this note, I think a lot of us have fallen into the trap as investors of thinking investing in the electric vehicle industry is a days, weeks, or months type of investment, but it's just not. Investing in electric vehicles in the electric vehicle industry is a multi-year investment. I would go out on a limb here and say almost a decade long investment. Now, a lot of people don't have patience. The reason I'm bringing this up is because if you are currently down on Lordstown Motors stock or you are currently down on Workhorse stock, it doesn't mean that in the future you won't be making lots and lots of profits off of your investment. The companies that have it figured out and have a good product, they're going to succeed. Lordstown Motors, I think, has a good product. We need them to start producing. They have good publicity. I mean, they have Joe Burrow as a partner, an NFL quarterback. All it takes is him posting pictures of himself driving one of these Lordstown Endurances to get increased publicity. So if you're in Lordstown Motors, I don't think there's much concern here as long as the company starts producing and delivering vehicles. Because if that happens, everything else is going to fall into place. They have the publicity and marketing figured out. They have the technology. They have everything except production and deliveries. Another thing they need, obviously, is financing, which I don't think is going to be a big deal whatsoever. There have been shorts and bears making it out to seem like the lack of financing for Lordstown is make or break for the company. It's not. All Lordstown needs is a loan from an investor or a bank. Who really cares? All they need is a loan. Almost any company in today's day and age can secure a loan. But now I want to start getting into why I think Workhorse could actually be Lordstown Motors' savior here. The fact that so many new eyeballs are in Workhorse stock and the fact that 40% of their float is currently short means that Workhorse stock could really rocket back up to all-time highs or higher. Again, this is not a valuation play. People will get that mixed up time and time again. But the people that are putting money into Workhorse right now are not putting money into Workhorse for its valuation. The vast majority are putting money into Workhorse because they think it could be the next AMC. That's just the way it is, whether you want to admit it or not. But if enough retail investors do start putting money into this, forcing shorts to cover, forcing a short squeeze, all of a sudden this gets really interesting because what Workhorse does, and they've done this in the past when they were at all-time highs, is they raised capital. They financed. They raised money. I don't think this time would be any different if retail investors could somehow force a short squeeze here and allow Workhorse to raise hundreds of millions of dollars at its all-time high. All of a sudden, Workhorse could double down on its stake in Lordstown Motors 
and give Lordstown Motors an emergency source of funding. It's not going to take much for Lordstown Motors to secure enough financing to make it. They just need GM, which they are in active discussions with currently, or Workhorse, which I think is a possibility. I don't think that's been talked about yet to invest more money into their company. That's all it will take. And all of a sudden, they have the first two years of production and deliveries financed. And at that point, you'd hope that eventually Lordstown could become profitable and not need more financing. So just to review here, both companies need to get their production and deliveries figured out. That is step one. That is very important for the success of both of these companies. Right now, they've been pushing that off. They cannot push that off any longer. Right now, Lordstown Motors is kind of in shambles, replacing their CEO and CFO. However, if they can get production, financing, and deliveries figured out, all of a sudden, this company becomes a decade-long investment for most investors that will make them a lot of money and lots of investing profits. All it takes is patience and time. If you guys are currently down on your positions and you believe, you truly believe in each of these companies, there's no reason to freak out. If you truly believe that these management teams can figure out the production and deliveries, there's literally nothing to fear because they have everything else figured out. They have publicity, they have marketing, they have technology. Workhorse on the other hand, very similar. They have a product that only a few companies offer, electric delivery vehicles. They also possess a patent, a very valuable patent that allows them to be the only company allowed to launch a drone from the top of a delivery vehicle. Anyways, personally, I am not planning on buying back into these companies currently. They're just better places, in my opinion, for my money to be right now. However, if these companies continue to stay depressed and they start figuring out the production deliveries, I would gladly jump back into these stocks. So with that, I wish every single one of you that are invested in these companies success going forward. If you guys are new here or returning and not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button down below. With that, guys, I'll be back with a brand new video later this week. Peace out. <laughs>